You're watching Telecom TV from 5G World 2017 in London. I'm joined now by Abby Alidusti, who is CEO of AWTG. Abby, good to see you again on Telecom TV. Why is 5G so important to the industry? I believe 5G um, offer different um, business cases and whole ecosystem is totally different from 3G and 4G. So we have a better network connectivity in the future, of course, and speed, latency, ultra latency, and so forth. So the whole ecosystem is different. And we have a lot of vertical is involved, which is very important, and also partner. So that make, hopefully by 2020, make our life easier. We have uh, used the 5G in our day-to-day -day activity and, and so forth. But if, and only if, we really be honest with ourselves, and look at the reality of the challenges we will face in the future. That makes a successful 5G. 5G isn't just a new generation of mobile, it's far more wide ranging than that. So what are the challenges of deploying 5G? Initially, everybody talking about the radio, everybody think 5G is a radio. So of course, radio is part of the 5G, but the main challenges 5G has is a vertical and application. And unless we bring the vertical to the picture and they bring the investment and also deployment, helping the deployment, 5G cannot be successful. We are talking about ultra uh, uh, latency, we are talking about high speed connectivity, all need a lot of investment. Some of the business case is great. For instance, the business case for uh, autonomous vehicle is great. But operator, I don't believe they take the risk because it's very risky for them. And then you look at the uh, remote surgery is a great opportunity, but how you can bring the one millisecond latency to the picture is very hard. I'll give you one simple example. Um, we are 2017, from 2010, if you remember, everybody, all the operator promising a small cell, massive small cell deployment. Is anything happening? Not now. And it's not going to happen even by 2020. And this is a challenge. The challenge is economics and logistics. Economic is who is going to pay for the fiber, who is paying for the, bring the power to the site and the radio equipment and so forth. And logistics is how you can get the right of the site for operators. So operator is not willing to spend huge amount of money investment on the 5G user is not willing to pay extra money for the service, extra service they are getting. So whole ecosystem has a problem. So unless we are not sitting together and really resolve this issue, 5G will be delay and delay and delay. And again, I have to emphasize on this. We are talking about by 2020, we have a LTE advanced with some functionality of 5G. Nobody should, consumer should not accept, we should not over promising the uh, consumer we have by 2020, we have a 5G network. The first full version of 5G won't be ready until 2020. But really this is only the start of a much longer process. Will the UK be ready for rollout of 5G by 2020 though? We deployed 2014, we deployed 44 sites in Surrey University. And, there, and we had two months time and scale to deploy 44 sites. And we successfully managed to do this. The only reason was we had a good partner, intelligent people in Saudi University helping together, and there is no political involved. So everybody worked, and by two months we finished the whole network. If you want to do it 44 sites in central London, maybe it takes one year, maybe more. So we believe even to put one, one side, to get the right of the side for operator, it takes three to six months. How do you want to do 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 small cell in central London? It's not logistic. And then you are talking about massive sensor in central London. Then you have to bring the backhaul. Infrastructure in United Kingdom for fiber is weak. But I believe if they put the mindset right, and work together, I'm sure by 2020 we can have some sort of 5G network. Now you work with a number of interesting and disruptive partners. 
tell me more about your presence here at 5G World? Well, we are working with different partners, and uh, one of uh, two, three of the partners is Line. Uh, basically, they have a, a software defined uh, radio, which is programmable, and also it is uh, open source. So it's, it's given opportunity to everybody to use their software, and it's cost effective. At the other hand, we have IoT pulses, IoT partner, which we are working with Line, and they are working together to see how they can bring the new business case. So AWTG and these two partners, we are working very hard to bring the business case to, to give to our client, to operator or even government. So cost effective is very important. Coordination is very important. Unfortunately, we don't see that much coordination in, in the 5G. It's a lot of vertical is involved. If the vertical is not invited, then it will be disaster for 5G. What needs to be done to ensure the successful introduction of 5G? You mentioned engagement with vertical industries and improvements to the core network, but do we also require additional political support? Government, local government and local authority, we have to really support uh, operators. Operators need to work with the vertical to understand their requirement and engagement with the 5G and manage to get the investment from them. Because otherwise, operator, as I said, operator is not willing to invest. Vertical, if all the vertical get the requirement, the operator get the requirement from vertical and promise good SLA, then they can attract them to do investment. And government, or of course, a United Kingdom government already invest on the Trial and Study University and other uh, test bed, but it's not enough. And one thing I have to uh, emphasize on this, the only way we can have a successful deployment, forget about the equipment, forget about the core network, successful deployment is only if local authority work with operator and have a, some sort of agreement with operator to give the street furniture uh, asset to operator free in return for good SLA and good 5G network. And then we can have a fast deployment. Otherwise, we have a delay. Look at the small cell. If we are 2017, we just see the trial. How long we have to wait? And O2 recently announced they want to put 1,400 the small cell in central land, which is quite good news. But again, think about it. 1,400 is enough? The question is definitely not. We have to have more and more and more small cell to it. We have done the test between London and Scotland. And what we can see, even our 3G is not meet the requirement and 4G. So they have a lag. Still we are getting 68, 70 uh, millisecond latency. So how we can bring this latency to one millisecond is a challenge. Abby, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure. Thank you.